Ah, uh, Fan Showdown, Season 2, Episode 10. We're back. It's It's been a minute since our last Fan Showdown, but, you know, let's just, let's just get a move on. Thank you to Thangs for sponsoring this episode. Every now and then, when I create something on the channel that I like, that I think you might also find useful, I like to upload it. However, many times after I've done this, I've gotten comments saying, you should switch your hosting site because the one you're currently using isn't always the best experience. Well, Thangs is here to help. Thangs is a platform for independent engineers, product designers, and 3D CAD enthusiasts and hobbyists. Thangs helps you find things with ease, with over 1.6 million models and growing indexed in their database. With Thangs, you don't need to jump through hoops to find what you're looking for. Even if you don't know what exactly it is, if you have a model that's somewhat similar, you can upload it to Thangs and let their geometric search figure it out for you and find similar models that you can use in your project. They even have models that are available as augmented reality files. Whether you're looking to find a model or share a model, Thangs is here to make your life easier, so click the link in the description below and start exploring today. First up is Cade and his fan ARMS. Uh, Cade said that the goal was to win, and the other was attaching the blades to the outside of the fan disc. Now how Cade went about accomplishing this was to use three of the nine blades to attach the other six blades to the fan hub, which, well, I mean, we've, we've seen fans with blades on the hub before, but never anything, you know, this drastic. The nine blades are broken into three clusters, and those three clusters are then attached to the fan disc by just a skinny little center blade. And I don't know um, how well that's gonna work, but uh, I do know that that's a, lot of, that's a lot of mass on the outside of the fan disc spin around and around. So we, we're in for something. Now, over the life of this series, we've seen We've seen many people take their inspirations for their fans from Mother Nature, uh, mostly birds. One time we did have a whale, um, but other than that, it's pretty much straightforward what it always is. Birds are marine life, until now. This is the moose and it was created by Chris and well, the inspiration behind it was the moose. Like many of us, Chris looked at the moose and thought, what a brilliant specimen of aerodynamic prowess. Chris gets it. He's just built different. And uh, well, he looked at the moose and he said, I'm gonna make a fan out of that. And he did. He took the antlers uh, from the moose and made a little fan with eight blades. And um, moose antlers, surprisingly, are very fan blade-like when, when you go to, when you think about it, I guess. This could be um, the future as we know it, moose fans. You know what else might be in the future if Simon has anything to say about it? Uh, square fans. Simon said, you know what? I'm sick of looking at all these round computer fans. I think we need some square PC fans in the PC cooling ecosystem. So he did. And Simon sent this model and simply said, I wanted to make a square-ish fan. So I made it. Well, we can't call him a liar. That's, that is for sure. So from animal shapes to regular shapes, uh, what about food? Well, then the next one was inspired by, well, you go ahead and guess. This is the waffle and it was made by Gerben and he said the inspiration behind this came to him while he was just sitting down having his morning coffee and then he looked at the geometrical patterns of his waffles and said, that boys, that's a fan. Now again, I don't know how well this will perform but I do like waffles and I think that this kind of looks cool. I think you should have called it the waffle stomper if anybody out there watched Doug Funny back in the day. I, I mean, these are all pretty unique. I wonder, I wonder how they sound. The waffle came in with a sound level of 48.9 dBA. The square came in with a sound level of 45.2 dBA. The moose came in with a sound level of 41.7 dBA. And the arms, yeah, having that much mass on the outside of the disc connected with only a little tiny, you know, fan blade, didn't work the best. When this thing starts spinning around and around and around, that centrifugal force just kind of pulls everything out and these things start to twist and unfortunately, they, uh, they touch the fan shroud. The arms came in with a sound level of 58.9. Yikes. But even though it rubs on the uh, fan trout, it does push air just like the rest of them. So I think it's time to smoke test them.
So last but not least, let's talk thermals. The ARMS comes in with an average temperature of 79.3 at a room temperature of 20.9, giving us a delta of 58.4. The Moose comes in with an average temperature of 78.6 at a room temperature of 20.6, giving us a delta of 58. The Square comes in with an average temperature of 76.7 at a room temperature of 20.4, giving us a delta of 56.3. And the Waffle, the Waffle Stomper, comes in with an average temperature of 84.2 at a room temperature of 21, giving us a delta of 63.2. Placing the square in first place, the moose in second place, the arms in third place, and, well, the waffle stomper in fourth. Overall, other than the square fan, most of these come in towards the, the mid to back end of the pack when we look at everything else. But either way, it's always a fun time to just see what you guys came up with. You know, mooses and waffles and squares and just print them out, see what happens. And if you want to get involved in the fan showdown at gmail.com, make sure to head over to my Thingiverse account so you can find the model for the fans to give you all the critical dimensions you need and then make sure to send at least an STL file to the, my Gmail account, thefanshowdown at gmail.com. And maybe next time, we'll look at yours. Peace.